NFL free agency opened on Thursday and all shit hit the fan rather quickly. Uh, there was a lot of deals that went through. There was reports of deals that went through like the Brandon Marshall to the Giants deal uh, and all got in the way of being finalized. Not all of these are done deals yet, but a lot of them are agreed upon. Uh, joined by uh, Francis Maxwell and uh, star of Aggressive Progressives and arguably fourth best TYT basketball player. The uh, fourth Steve best. Oh, yeah. wow! That's, that's not even, that's not mm, even a, like an accolade. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking third. Arguably the ninth nice. coolest guy in this room. <laughs> well, no, I mean I, he's still who's top. better than me. Jr. Mm, questionable. Uh, I, Hassan is when he's no. healthy. When he's healthy, Wrong. he can bully you. He's got like three hundred pounds in, on in you. a one-on-one -on -one game. Yes, Hassan would beat me because he can just just right. uh, post me up. I get it. He's got but but uh, me versus Haas and a whole team, I kick yeah. his ass. Uh, the Marcus yeah. All of TYT basketball, Dan Keston. No, Marcus so. knows his role, plays it well. I'm retired. I don't know. I I feel like I could take Haas one-on-one -on -one to like twenty-one. I feel like I'm faster than him. Yeah, he's got. He's 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 so much slower than me. Okay, okay, okay. Guys, we've tangented a lot right. before we even got to this clip. That's, that's on right. my. That's on me anyway. Uh, free agency card one and two. Uh, big deals first, and then you know some more minor deals uh, for the second one. So uh, Jacory with it. Eagles sign wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey. <laughs> Texans trade Brock Osweiler to the Browns. Buccaneers agree to terms with uh, Deshaun Jackson. The Giants sign Brian and Marshall. Uh, we're gonna of course open up with. Uh, uh, the Brock Osweiler trade. So, Jacory, skip to element number three to give you some details as to what the Browns did, and it's actually, from the business sense, a smart move. Cleveland gets Osweiler, a 2018 second round pick, and a 2017 sixth round pick from the Texans. Also absorbed 16 million of Osweiler's guaranteed salary. Houston gets a fourth round pick from the Browns and clears cap space, uh, cap space immediately, and 16 million in cash. Do you, I wonder if they give it to him like in actual suitcases, but those improved finances will be in pursuit of Tony Romo. So, gentlemen, a lot. Of, I, I freaked out immediately thinking this was like the dumbest trade in history, and then about three minutes after, I realized that the Browns had the space and they get draft picks. They're pretty much buying draft picks, and along with the draft pick, they're like, here, take them. We don't want Brock Osweiler. Yeah. I, I think it's actually one of the best trades ever. Yeah. I think it's a giant win-win. If the Browns can turn this around and then trade Osweiler to someone else, we'll take him for five million a year or whatever it right. is. Then that gets offset from their sixteen million that, that that they're paying. So then it's a big win for them. So right. um, kudos all around. There's two different ways you can really go about rebuilding a team. You can try in free agency uh, and sign players, and then you have teams like the Packers uh, who believe that you should only be doing it through your draft, homegrown players, and. Both strategies have worked out for certain teams, including ones that have made runs in the Super Bowl. The Patriots are always active in trading and free agency. Uh, they also have pretty good at drafting. The Browns have not been good on the drafting end, but have at least made some changes in their management and executive offices that with two first round picks this year and two second round picks this year, you can start to put together young, good talent. And in this case, Brock Osweiler hopefully goes somewhere else, but where, the Jets? Like where did where would you want Brock Osweiler to play? I don't know. <coughs> and you good over there? <coughs> Take a quick break. I need a glass of water. <laughs> but um, I brought Steve to tears. I'm, I'm very frustrated with the whole situation with Brock Osweiler because, <clears throat> all right. So I'm bitter. I'm personally bitter about this issue because I'm on the short side, and short people are always uh, you know disrespected in mm. sports, especially <laughs> at the quarterback position. So this is why I love Russell Wilson because. Mm. Um, you know, I can sympathize with him. You know, uh, I played quarterback for my fraternity team. I was awesome. Um, <laughs> Spy Sigma Kappa nice. at Cornell. Um, <clears throat> and I took my uh, flag football team to the championship game. Anyway, um, <laughs> and, and I took my, ta yeah. my talents to TYT basketball. That's right. <laughs> uh, but here's a problem mm -hmm. Brock Osweiler, other than being 6'8, like, why, why is he coveted? Because he's 6'8 and can throw the ball pretty hard, I suppose. But so what? He, he can't. There's so much to drafting a quarterback, and this is the reason why I'm shocked at the number of people in the NFL who got paid, I mean, they're paid millions of dollars, have a massive staff worth millions more to get one thing right, and they keep getting it wrong. So the, look at the Browns. Uh, they took uh, Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. To me, it was obvious he'd be a failure in the right. NFL, because it's more, it's more about preparation and, and mental toughness in the NFL than anything else, I think. I mean, of course, you gotta have the minimal Physical skills, but you take someone like uh, like Aaron Rodgers, who apparently is uh, 
insane about practice. Mm -hmm. He can't practice enough. He loves it. He loves film study. You can't get him out of the film room. Same thing with Russell Wilson. Like that kind of mindset, that's what you're looking for, okay? Plus success in a good program, plus the ability to run a pro style offense. But you take someone like uh, Osweiler because he's tall, or like Johnny Menzel because he's popular, those are bad reasons to take a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, where does Brock Osweiler belong? Well, I think he's a good uh, backup quarterback. Backup. So uh, he can't get paid $16 million, that's crazy talk. So he should go somewhere and be a solid backup uh, like a Brian Hoyer, Chad Henney type of type of player, uh, he should maybe get three to six million dollars a year, and that makes sense. Uh, he's not going to be your starting quarterback. What is what's going to happen with Kaepernick? What is well, it? Kaepernick, is I'm, he I'm not sure. Well, he, he needs to. He he hasn't found a job just yet. Uh, Kaepernick at least has the legs. He can add that element to his game. So, again, another backup. He shouldn't be starting in the NFL. Maybe not the worst person to have as your second string or third string guy. But you're not going to be winning. I, I, I kind of disagree with with you on that one. You I think, think Kaepernick could play. I think Kaepernick has proven that he could play. Uh, for whatever reason, the whole team fell apart around Kaepernick, the and defense, he fell yeah. apart too. So uh, it's on him. It's not just on his teammates, but the whole team, the front office, the management, everything with the 49ers fell apart, and and part of it was Kaepernick's uh, significant regression. Uh, but but Kaepernick has shown and shown that he can throw the ball accurately. He's lost confidence, he's lost timing in his chemistry. If he's put into a good situation with the right players around him, a good coaching staff, I think he can be a winner. I, just, um, he, I, I don't think he's a career backup. No, right, I, I still find him in the backup role for the reason that I think if he, to be a starting quarterback, look, there's how many good starting quarterbacks are there? 10, 12. 10, 12, and then you probably have max. another seven or eight that are gonna get you to eight and eight kind of get the job done, you might compete for a playoff, but you're not winning any playoff games. So you're really talking about there's 15, I guess we're gonna use the word quality, starting quarterbacks. So it's a very, very, very finite amount. And I just don't think Kaepernick can do, and he has proven that in the past, but he did also have Harbaugh's 49ers defense, where he wasn't asked to do so much. So I think it's a very specific system you gotta plug him in. I mean, if you plug like, Kaepernick into the Denver Broncos. I was just gonna say, <clears throat> where he's not gonna be asked mm -hmm. to do that much. If he only has to score at one touchdown a game, like again, a la Russell Wilson we were talking about recently. Remember when Russell Wilson first came in the league? Yeah. He didn't need to do much, just not make mistakes and go 10 of 16 for 120 yards and a touchdown and maybe run for 20. That's right. Like, if that's what you need out of Colin Kaepernick, he can do that. He can do that. But you yeah. better have the defense to make sure you're And, in you the know, game. If, you, if he lives in that kind of uh, situation for a season or two that might, at some point, he can find a way to elevate his game like right. Russell Wilson did. Yeah, now that team true. is a Russell Wilson-based team. Before it was a Marshawn Lynch and defense-based team. Yep. So, um, you know, there's an opportunity for teams to develop their players by surrounding the players with the right people. And that's part of the problem with the Browns. I mean, one, they picked the wrong players to be their quarterback, but also they don't provide that player with the opportunities to grow and develop the way they need to and in never, the NFL. Never an offensive line. Like yeah. never, they never want to protect that their quarterback. And it's amazing because they miss out on the Mariotas and Jameis Winstons. And, and, and Mariota's case would have been, I think, a good uh, draft from the Browns because just like you said, likes the film room, stand-up guy, likes to practice. That's who you want. That's why Mitch Trubisky from North Carolina isn't a bad guy to look at if you're the Browns. He's not going to flash anything in terms of freak athleticism, but you know what type of quarterback he is uh, based on the fact that he likes to practice. He likes the film room. All right, uh, the second free agency card before we get into Jimmy Garoppolo's hacked Instagram. Uh, there's a couple other uh, deals that happened. The Titans signed Logan Ryan, as you know from the Patriots. Jaguars signed uh, AJ Boye, which is actually a really, really, he's probably the best, go back one, there you go. Uh, probably the best corner on the market was the Seahawks get a former second overall pick in uh, Jackal, 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 I always get that one wrong. Uh, for the offensive lineman, something we talked about a lot last season during Turks and Jerks was the Seahawks line could never stay healthy. Uh, and the 49ers get Marquise Goodwin and Brian Football. And it looks like Brian Football, aka Brian Hoyer, is likely going to start for the 49ers this year. And Terrell Pryor. Did he really? Terrell Pryor to the I don't know why anybody would ever sign for the Redskins. They're the biggest disgrace in American sports. Have you read through the story of 
You seen it? I should send it to everybody. No, I I know Cousins asked for a trade, but it I don't know what's going on. It wasn't just sound like Ben Well, right, so he's saying. right about this one. Well, he's well, Ben's son. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say <laughs> he's similar. right about this one, and he's been he's been on this train for you know five years, Ben, with the with the hating on the Redskins, but rightfully so. Um, they aired out the fact that McLaughlin, their uh, general manager, was they fired him for being a drinker, which was known around the league, and then pinned 18 months of him, uh, of his uh, personality in the in meetings and stuff like that, and all these little details on his drinking. And other GMs around the league started tweeting out and saying, like, look, they know he, he acknowledged his problem. It was something that he carried with him from the Seahawks when he was GM of the Seahawks. And they pretty much crucified him for something that was known and the players loved him and the coaches loved him. And what it very much smells like, according to an article from Drew McGarry in, in GQ, is uh, Washington Redskins' Dan Snyder was jealous that McLaughlin was making good decisions, 17-14-1 over his two years while being with the Redskins. And he decided to oust him and then air out the dirty laundry. It's just such a shitty Dan Snyder thing to do. It's a typical Dan Snyder thing to do. Yeah, it's He's a typical. horrendous... Horrendous owner and, and a even, really bad guy. Sorry, but even crazier was the fact that he backed up, and I forget the writer who wrote for the Washington Post. He pried a Washington Poster, uh, Post writer away to work for the Redskins and then fired him a week later and then stood by him when he ran the article, Americans are not, uh, do not think the Redskins name is offensive. That was a Washington Post mm -hmm. article. And Snyder wanted to hire that guy. I mean, just the fucking worst, man. Jimmy Garoppolo's trade. Uh, this is fake news. So grateful for my time in New England. Peace out, Boston. It was hacked around 4 a.m. Um, yeah, we'll cut it down. Don't worry. Uh, so grateful for my time in New England. Peace out, Boston, is what he said. Uh, it's not what he actually said. This went up around 4 o'clock in the morning, East Coast time. He claims he was hacked, and there was a bunch of response on <coughs> Twitter from the Adam Schefters and pro football uh, beat writers saying there's been no talks with the Browns. There's been no talks with the Jets. There's been no talks with the 49ers about Garoppolo leaving New England. Is it you know, you get one of those moments where you just look at someone and you're just like, that guy's got like everything probably laid out from in his life. Right. That's one of those. He like he's, he doesn't have the pressure of playing a quarterback. He's quite literally like Blue Mountain, uh, State. Blue Mountain State quarterback yeah. where they made the show about how he just gets to get with all the girls and doesn't have the pressure of the games. Really good looking guy. <laughs> He's got his fellow teammate, it's Tom Brady, right? No doubt he's got he's learning a lot from him when he does have to. And when he stepped in, he did a pretty decent job. Um, and he's just playing for the, the best team in the NFL whilst all of that is coming into fruition. If this is a Ben Mankiewicz comment where he looks at Joe Hart, the England goalkeeper, and says, that guy gets laid, <laughs> right. that guy gets laid. <laughs> there is no doubt. That's my takeaway from Jimmy Garoppolo. Well, Jimmy Garoppolo is in a great that. situation. If I'm Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm not sure I want to change that. <laughs> yeah, um, because I'm not sold on him necessarily because... Yes, he looked great in relief of, of Tom Brady. But when Garoppolo went down, so did, was it? Uh, Jacoby Brissett? Jacoby Brissett, yeah, Jacobi Brissett, right? He looked great too. So the Patriots have a good system. And I don't know, it's the genius of uh, Bill Belichick yeah, and the course. system that they've installed. They kind of plug and play any quarterback and they all do well. Um, they had, um, didn't they have, uh, what's his name? Uh, well, Matt, Matt Castle. Who Matt Castle. And then went to the Chiefs. Yeah, Matt Castle looked great in, in New England. So yeah, twelve and four, I think. Um, and, and then that guy Matt Flynn looked great in Green Bay. Uh, he had one amazing game when he threw for six touchdowns. Yeah, but we can't. We're not going to give Mike McCarthy that credit, <laughs> right? Uh, he he parlayed that into a, a contract with the Seahawks, which then yep. he lost out to a rookie, Russell Wilson. Wilson. So I'm not sold on backup quarterbacks in great situations that do well in limited time. And you know, I don't think he's Brock Osweiler. But that's what happened with Brock Osweiler. Yeah. He was in a very, very good situation in Denver with an amazing defense, solid running game, and um, you know, Super Bowl bound team. Yeah. And he just kind of held things down for a few games. He wasn't horrendous. He wasn't magical. He was just okay. And he parlayed that into a seventy-eight million dollar contract or eighty million, whatever that was. Seriously, man. So um, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it, and it may not be what you want. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. There's uh, Aaron Rodgers. Stay with your team, man, and see what happens. If you know you work in that system, Aaron Rodgers turned out all right. Maybe Garoppolo stays when Brady retires in, in two thousand twenty-four. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Comment below, <laughs> like, favorite, and subscribe. Uh, probably like one of the last NFL clips we do until the draft. We'll see you next time.